Welcome all the We left off our series with the great Yard Hokun fighting off the Danes and foreign invaders multiple times. Even though he was just a chieftain, he was effectively the ruler of Norway and he was absolutely loved by all. One of the most honored heroes in Scandinavia that we have ever seen. And Norway now, at this point in history, was untouchable. The largest and most well-trained and equipped fighting forces in the world at the time had all tried and failed to invade Norway. Norway was at its all-time high in history, arguably. But all good things must come to an end. There was no foreign force large enough and strong enough to challenge the Norwegians. The only thing that could lead to its demise was turmoil from the inside. The first step of that was the fall of Jarl Håkon and the loss of his leadership. You see, Håkon was loved by all, but he had a little problem. He liked the ladies, he was a horn dog, he was the rock star of the whole country, every girl wanted him, every man wanted to have his daughter marry him, but Håkon abused this power to its fullest and he enjoyed himself. He got all the most beautiful women in Scandinavia and invited them to come visit him, telling their fathers he would speak of a marriage, but he ended up just sleeping with the women for a week or two and then sending them back home all used up and tainted, and he pissed off the most powerful chieftains in the country by using their daughters this way. You see, the general public still live, loved Holcomb, but the powerful chieftains now hated him. But they didn't do anything to directly um, threaten Holcomb because he was still too powerful and loved. All the meanwhile, little whispers started to be heard that there was a man in England who claimed to have Norse royal blood. He was born in Gaidariki, so Russia area, but he was of Norse blood, Norse royal blood, and he was son to Norwegian King Trygve, who died some years before this. His son's name, it was Atli, it was told, and he was making a great name for himself as a powerful warrior both in the East and in the British Isles. Håkon sent spies over to the British Isles to see who this man was, and it was at that time he found out this Atli was in fact Olav Tryggvason, and it was actually Håkon's spy and good friend Ture who met with Olav Tryggvason and like a traitor told Olav that many men in Norway were angry with Håkon and they would be happy if a descendant of Harald Fairhair returned to take the throne and this treacherous spy egged Olav on to come to Norway to challenge Håkon. And this was the worst timing for Håkon because Olav Tryggvason arrived in Norway swiftly at the exact time when Jarl Håkon was at his horn dog ways again. He was trying to sleep with another man's wife, a man named Oim, and he sent out word so that four chieftains and their men would unite and stand up to Håkon. Now, four tribes would usually be no challenge for Håkon at all, um, but he was without his army, so he had to run and go into hiding with his loyal man, Kark. Meanwhile, Håkon was hidden away. Olav Tryggvason had found Håkon's son, Erlend, and slayed him. And all the chieftains of the area, uh, for the time being, uh, joined Olav Tryggvason, who took this opportune moment to raise support. He did a bounty on Håkon's head, letting everybody know. And it was Håkon's loyal friend, eventually Kark, who betrayed him in hiding and stabbed him in his sleep. And that is the end of the story of Jarl Håkon. His friend Kark, by the way, brought Håkon's head out to Olav Tryggvason to claim the reward. Uh, but Olav and his men then beheaded Kark because he had betrayed his friend and acted like a disloyal um, uh, follower. After that, when Olav was named king of Norway, um, that is when the real problems started to come. And that's what we are covering in the next video in the series. Stay tuned.